Economia Publishing is proud to welcome Professor Professor Christophorus Pisaridis in this uh, Delphi Economic Forum fireside chat. Of course, there is no fire, there, there is no real contact, but still we hope we have some interesting points to make conversation. Professor Pisaridis of LSE and the Nobel Prize fame 10 years ago is a longtime friend of Economia and welcome from the historical center of Athens near Monastiraki. Try and put some things straight about what's happening around us in Greece. When uh, Professor Pisaridis got his he made a, a very interesting, a very shrewd comment that and then he was mainly being asked to comment on things he knew. Uh, his uh, main uh, topic is labor economics. Then on, ask questions about everything. And I would like to open this discussion with a rather wide question. Is he more or less optimistic about the next steps both in the world economy, in Europe, and in Greece. Where are we heading? Mr. Pisaridis. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you asked me about the global economy and um, Greece. Where are we heading? Uh, from what I understood, because I'm afraid I have to say the sound quality is not very good. So I hope you forgive us if we get a question wrong. Um, Am I optimistic? Well, I'm less optimistic now than I was two months ago, for sure. Uh, COVID is uh, um, having a bigger impact on our economy than uh, I had anticipated. And um, what's worrying me especially is the following about the world economy. We knew that in the last few years, um, maybe two or three years, especially the biggest transformations taking place in our economy and the biggest challenges was how to uh, uh, incorporate the new technologies, automation, especially digital technologies, artificial intelligence, uh, and at the same time succeed in um, uh, helping workers, helping the economy adjust to the new reality, get to new jobs that were not susceptible uh, to the new technologies. That process was uh, moving quite well, especially with Northern European countries. Southern European countries were failing, as I pointed out uh, a few times. China was doing exceptionally well in this process. In fact, it was challenging the United States, and that explains a lot about the reactions of President Trump uh, to China. Uh, and then suddenly COVID uh, comes along. Now, if you look at COVID now, you would think that the biggest problem that is causing is the recession in which the world economy has sunk. That's definitely a problem. And uh, we have to deal with that as a separate issue. But in my view, COVID is introducing problems that will last into the medium and long run in the following sense. Automation is accelerating because companies are now realizing if, you are, if they are going to automate anyway, and that if, if they had plans to do it over the next five to 10 years to replace their workers with machines, they might as well do it now because machines are not susceptible to COVID. And um, the new jobs that were going to attract those workers who are losing their jobs to automation are not coming into the market because most of them involved uh, human interaction. They were in the hospitality sector of the economy, tourism, when it comes to Greece, uh, health and care, uh, retail, uh, trade, domestic services for less skilled workers. But those jobs uh, will not be forthcoming because people don't want the close uh, physical contact. So we're stuck in a sense. There is speeding up the destruction of jobs through automation and slowing down the creation of jobs uh, for the workers who lose uh, those jobs. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Good morning, uh, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Pesaridis. Uh, this is Yanis Koutsomitis uh, from, Giannis from, from, uh, the, from uh, Delphi the Delphi studio, studio in Athens. Uh, because, our uh, because our connection with, uh, with Mr. Papayanidis uh, has been slowed down. Uh, let me take over and ask you, please, and ask you, which, which sectors of the I cannot Greek hear economy, you. Sorry. Uh, which sectors of the Greek economy... No sound. 
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear the last okay. sentence, but yes, okay. I didn't hear uh, anything. Uh, all right, all right. Let, all right, let me right. rephrase. Let me rephrase. Which sectors, which of, the sectors economy, of the Greek economy have the best potential to become no, internationally competitive? Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, just a minute. Our uh, technicians are, our fixing, technicians up are fixing up the problem. Just a minute. Just can a minute. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, OK. okay. Uh, uh, let's try again. Let's try again. Uh, which sectors, uh, which sectors of the Greek of economy, the Greek economy you, think you think have the best have potential, the best potential to, become to become champions and become competitive, and become competitive in, the in the international marketplace? I'm not, I'm not a fan of the um, uh, situation where we name champion sectors and we move in and, and help them. In fact, um, I've been asked that question so many times, not only about the Greek economy, about the, the British economy, about the Chinese economy when I go to China, about the Cyprus economy, certainly when I'm there. And um, my answer is always the same. No one knows which sectors will be the most competitive. It, it, it's not something economists do to sit and look at the economy and say, ah, this sector is good, that sector, the other sector is not good. What the economist's job is, and um, I think, I think that, and, and that's certainly where economic theory is going nowadays, is to identify barriers to uh, private economic activity. And once you remove those barriers, then the economy will by itself converge in the sectors where there is a comparative advantage in terms of human capital, physical capital, geography, institutional structure, history, all these things contribute. But the, the, the economy's job is to make sure that the institutional environment of a country is favorable to the exercise of, uh, entrepreneurial, of the entrepreneurial spirit. And certainly Greeks are very entrepreneurial. We can see what they do when they get released into a, a, a competitive environment. After all, Greek civilizations have been around for a very long time, so there must be something right with these people. It cannot be all wrong. <laughs> uh, and uh, all, you, all you need to do is to unleash that, uh, that initiative, that, that spirit, and they will identify the sectors much better than you and I. Exactly. I, I understand what you're saying. But uh, isn't it also an issue of how to... Uh, come uh, in terms with uh, the the entrepreneurs and the business community who tend to invest in uh, short term for short term gains rather than having long term planning and uh, having some investments that are not fruitful in the in the initial phase. How can we change the mentality of uh, trying to raise short term gains in the, in the Greek uh, entrepreneurial and business community? That, that, it's, it's not a mentality that drives people to invest short term. It's the, it's the structure of the economy and the incentives they are given to invest short term. If you give them the right incentives, they will invest long term. Um, th there, is, th th there is only one section of the economy, which I believe it, it, it goes after a short term gain. And this is the uh, speculation in the uh, banking sector with the uh, with the financial the derivatives, market. with uh, financial markets, those, those are the only short termists, and and I am against those. You know, I mean, finance mm -hmm. was always mm -hmm. this kind of finance, not corporate finance, was always the subject that I turned away in my academic studies and, and subsequent research because I believe that uh, they are essentially zero sum games. When it comes to entrepreneurial activity, mm -hmm. people go for the short term when they don't trust that things will be well in the longer term. Mm. You, you need to have trust in your uh, government economic policy, in your environment. And if you have that trust, then you are going to invest uh, long term. You see, to bring another example, I, I mentioned China three times now, so don't think that I'm really enamored to that country. country. I'm using it as an example because it's the fastest, it has been the fastest growing economy. They, they do plan for the, for the long term. I mean, they are now planning what will happen in, uh, in 
2047 or something, you know. They, they, they build infrastructure that is like that. And therefore, when they create business mm -hmm. there, like, you know, Huawei, for example, mm -hmm. they, one of the main digital companies there, they, they plan in a way that they are going to build infrastructure for a digital transformation that will last for the next mm -hmm. 100 years. Now, why is that? Because they trust that their government will behave in the same way 50 years from now as, as it is behaving now. They keep telling yeah. them all the time and, and they cannot get rid of them very easily anyway. So they assume that it will be there. So, so in, in answer to your question, how can we make them move, uh, behave long-term investments, increase confidence in them that there will be political stability, that they will be able to get rewards from their investments, that the, that the infrastructure will be there and they will do it. Uh, that's a very interesting question because uh, answer you gave me because uh, in Greece we the the governments and uh, the executive tends to search for short-term political gains also from the business uh, community. So uh, what we see now is a need for uh, the social partners, the business community, and also the employers to come together and find a common ground on how to build the new future for Greece. And this will be a big issue for your committee as well. Maybe. Let me, let me, let me, my committee has been given a remit by the prime minister and before we talk to him, I'm not going to talk to anyone else. All right, all right. I, I, I thank you for that. Uh, let me go back. You, you mentioned China, which is uh, one of the initial big investors in Greece. And uh, they've, they made a huge investment in uh, Piraeus, the port, which is proved to be quite successful. Uh, and they wanted to expand their uh, investment base in Greece. On the other hand, we see geopolitical tensions with the United States and to some extent Europe as well. Uh, which sees Greece as, as a gateway for its investments in uh, Eastern or Southeastern Europe. Do you see geopolitics uh, as a, a chance or as a burden in Greece's uh, economic future? Well, I see this, I, I see this a risk that needs to be handled uh, very, very carefully because uh, Greece is a small player. Uh, even the whole of the European Union is a small player when it comes to uh, United States and, uh, and and China and uh, and and in the uh, not too distant future, I suspect India will be there as well as, as a huge country. Um, the um, uh, I mean I'm, I mean I'm very worried about it in the sense that um, I, I do see behavior, uh, especially from the United States in the last. Uh, uh, three or four years, uh, which really makes no sense. It's it's almost random, you know. There is uh, President Trump just throwing one tweet after another, and the, and the Chinese are very sensitive about uh, things they hear, uh, and they react in uh, ways that uh, might be, uh, say, too much in comparison to what the initial uh, tweet was. Because you know, wait twenty four hours, and you might get another tweet after that. Who knows? Um, but unfortunately. Uh, that situation is not handled very uh, very well. In fact, uh, I was very disappointed when I saw the uh, at the Pacific uh, Cooperation Agreement uh, being uh, torn up by the by the Trump administration. Uh, very disappointed about various things said about Europe. So, when it comes to Greece and and this sort of big time politics, the best thing Greece can do. It, is to try to the extent that it can to get uh, uh, unanimity of opinion uh, within the European Union for the European Union to act uh, as one entity in this world. And that's partly why I'm so disappointed that uh, Britain has uh, taken the route that it has with Brexit. I don't, I, I don't think those who supported it, including the current prime minister, have given any deep thought to this issue. Of, you know, they... I don't know. They just campaign on trivialities when uh, you put it within the framework of these geopolitical issues.
I see. Uh, another big uh, sector or issue for Greece in recent years has been the development of energy resources and the interconnection of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, resources and uh, in the basin of uh, Cyprus and Israel and uh, potentially also in uh, southern, uh, south of Crete. Uh, the, the pandemic crisis has created a huge uh, gap in the energy demand internationally. Do you see uh, energy resources still as a credible uh, source of income for the region in general and especially for Greece since prices don't look to be in a very viable uh, level for the near future? Well, again, the prices of energy fluctuate in uh, unpredictable ways. I mean, it's certainly the case that um, uh, Greece in particular, but also the whole of the European Union and uh, the Eastern Mediterranean with uh, Israel, Cyprus and, and Turkey, of course, uh, following a very aggressive attitude there, uh, we need to develop uh, a, a good uh, energy infrastructure. Now, um, th there are a lot of pressures now, and, and rightly so, to um, encourage uh, renewable resources. Greece has um, enormous potential in renewable resources because it's got the sunshine and it's got the wind in the Aegean, uh, the two main uh, sources. Uh, although natural gas in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, it looks profitable, and that's why you get the uh, big companies willing to buy the, the rights and all that, and, and it should be uh, pursued. Um, I don't know what the geopolitics of Turkey do worry me ex extremely, especially as a Cypriot, I've seen it all happen since 1974. Um, and I don't want to see a repeat of that. And uh, at the same time, though, it should be developing the, uh, the, the renewable resources. I, I find it uh, absurd, uh, quite honestly, that uh, Germany, for example, is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, users of solar energy in the European Union. And most solar panels of German companies are located in Germany. I mean, what kind of single market are we? There is no sunshine in Germany. I mean, why don't they come and put them on the Greek islands? There must be something there that is not quite working quite right. And, and it's up to Greece to tell the Germans, look, we've got 2,000 rocky islands put them there, wind farms, solar panels, and we provide the cables to take it back to Germany if you want to have your factories in Germany, not wait for the few days of the year when there's a blue sky to get some energy. Absolutely. Uh, well, there was, there was a plan in the, in the initial years of the Greek bailout era where the German government came and uh, proposed uh, some uh, renewable energy projects for Greece. But it's very, very interesting that you mentioned that today, because today there will be a launch of a cable connect between Greece and Greece, which is a vital part of being able to have sustainable renewable resources on, on island, which we didn't have uh, until recently, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is uh, very important. But one last question, Mr. Pesaridis. Uh, the, we've been, we're going now step by step out of this pandemic crisis, which is affecting all economies in the world. And uh, Europe is uh, much more vulnerable, looks more vulnerable than other regions of the world. Uh, what do you see as an escape way for the, the, the European Union and the European economies to come out stronger out of this crisis and not replicate the mistakes of the past? Well, there's def I mean, it's definitely essential there that Europe will work together because we're too small within Europe, uh, each country to deal with it uh, on its own. Um, th there is, you know, I mean, the various programs that have been announced by the European Union are a very, very good start. I hope it gets approved. Of course, they haven't all been they haven't been approved yet, but I hope they do get approved, especially now with the German presidency coming up. The Germans are always especially influential when it comes to to finances, and um, and, and and I do think uh, there should be collaboration rather than uh, one country dictating to another. You know, the whole of Europe should should act together. 
Um, of course, with uh, COVID, uh, we depend very much on the med on the medical uh, profession. You know, if they come up with a vaccine in the near future, things will be much much better than if they don't. But then bear in mind that um, medical research uh, since uh, since uh, COVID and, and going back to SARS and is now discovering that uh, th this is not a one-off event. Uh, there are hundreds of viruses uh, in, 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 in ineffective in animals that could easily transfer to humans and create another one of these uh, pandemics. Mm. Uh, we learn hard lessons. I hope China has learned a lot. Uh, hard lessons because the misinformation or the lack of information, I should say, in November, December has cost us a lot in the West and in Europe. Um, and um, what, else, what else can we say? You know, Europe has strong economies when it works together. It, it, it's got highly trained uh, people. You know, the brain drain to the United States is uh, slowing down as far as I can see, but it should just stop because we are good enough to do it on our, on our own. I'm very, very disappointed by what's uh, happening in the United States uh, with the George Floyd uh, uh, really tragic situation, what the president has been saying since then, fingers crossed about the next uh, presidential elections in the United States. I'm not going to reveal my preferences, but you can guess what they are. Um, and uh, I, I, I hope, you know, when I um, when I go to, to bed at night in my more optimistic mood, I hope that there will be some enlightened collaboration within Europe and between Europe and the United States and the United States and China. Right. But then occasionally I wake up at night in, the, in a state of panic and I say, oh, my God. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Mr. Pissaridis, we thank you very much for this discussion, which was done in collaboration with Economia Publishing. And we thank very much, Mr. Papayanidis, for preparing this conversation. Thank you very much and hope to see you in physical terms next year at Delphi Forum. Thank you. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Goodbye.